a sermon in uh, about three weeks, so we'll see how we go. There's a, a Latin saying that we use in the church, and it is lex, uh, uh, lex credenti, lex orandi, probably mispronounced. Um, but it is um, uh, what we pray is what we believe, and what we believe is what we pray. And in a sense, our whole service is a prayer. The whole service is a prayer. And so the service should reflect what we believe. John, can I get the camera this way, please? Thank you. Just for those people watching at home. So um, what, we, uh, what we pray is what we believe. And grace is a, uh, a cornerstone, a foundation of our belief, the grace of God, freely given, the gift of of God to each of us. And so we should, in a sense, experience grace and witness grace in our service every Sunday. And I believe we do. But in particular on this Sunday, there's a number of, of uh, in our prayers and our readings. And so the colic prayer, which, which I led, there's grace uh, abounds in that prayer. I want to just go through that with you briefly. It begins, O Lord our God, you are always more ready to bestow your good gifts upon us than we are to seek them. And you are more willing to give than we desire or deserve. At the heart of that is grace. Uh, uh, as I've shared with you before and someone shared with me from this congregation, grace is uh, when God gives what we do not deserve. Grace is when God gives us what we do not deserve. And differs to mercy is that mercy is when God does not give us what we do deserve. So in this, there's a strong sense of God's grace. And the prayer then continues, in our every need, grant us the first and best of all your gifts, your spirit who makes us your children. God's presence in our lives is the greatest gift that we can ever have, the grace of God's gift. And that is a claim that the Christian church makes, which is in some sense astounding if you think about it, that we are the temples of the Holy Spirit, that our creator God dwells in each and every one of us. That is the gift of God freely given, the gift of a loving parent to often undeserving children. And then the, the colic prayer concludes with praise of Jesus as our Lord and our God. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. What stands out for me uh, in that colic prayer is the grace of God, freely given. Not deserved, not earned, not warranted. There's nothing that we have done to, to justify the gift of God's presence in our lives. That's the grace of God. And then to come to our readings. Now, Lauren did a wonderful uh, job in, exp in exploring the grace of God uh, in the gospel. That uh, being sent out, you are enough. God is with you. And that's a wonderful message for all of us, that there's the grace of God which will help us overcome any of the trials ahead as we'll go out doing God's will. But in the, in the New Testament reading that Beck, that Beck read for us very well, I might say, thank you, um, I struggle with Paul. I actually, if we had uh, uh, Bibles in, in the pews, I would have asked you to have the Bible open because uh, sometimes it's easier to listen and read Paul can write in really convoluted terms at times. And so what, what is Paul on about in this passage? It begins with reference to someone, and he could be talking about himself in the third person, having had, and I believe he is, having had a mystical vision. And he's had this vision, and so that he doesn't become elated with himself, more you know, pride and boastful, which is, again, quite human, uh, he says he was given 
a, a thorn in the side, a thorn in the flesh, um, to keep him grounded. Now, we don't know whether that thorn is literally a thorn that, you know, was uncomfortable for a long period of time, or whether it was a person, somebody who was that, that uh, 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 metaphorical thorn in the flesh, someone who was causing him angst. But his response is quite human as well. He prays to God three times that God will take this away. Hey, God, I'm here doing your will. I'm out uh, 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 spreading the good news, uh, having all these trials and tribulations. It's not easy going, and I've got this thorn. Now, whether it's a physical thorn or a metaphorical thorn, take this thorn away from me, God. How am I going to do your will? How am I going to do your will with this? Very human, natural response. And God's response, Paul says, as God says, my grace is enough for you. My grace. And that realization is like a, it's like a, a switch goes off in Paul's mind. He understands that when he is weak, it is then that he is strong because he realizes the utter dependency that he has on God's grace for anything, for everything. My grace is enough, God says. So that's Paul's reading. Again, strong sense of grace coming through. Grace in the colic prayer, grace in the gospel reading. What we pray is what we believe. What we believe is what we pray. And our whole worship service, the liturgy, uh, is a prayer. Grace is throughout. So how do we take what we've heard and applied it? Well, I think there's two things for, for me, and the second is probably the more challenging. The first is to follow in the example of Paul, in that when we feel uh, that we have a thorn in the flesh, whatever it might be, whether it be a personal, we feel guilty, we feel angry, we feel dejected, whatever we, you know, whatever feelings we might have. Uh, uh, or, or whether it is uh, a physical ail ailment, whatever thorn that we might have, that we say, God, I really can't do your will. I can't get on with being uh, a Christian or a baptized member of the church. I need this problem taken away. Remember, as Paul said, God's grace is enough. And it's when we are weak that we are truly strong. Because we then realize how utterly dependent we are on, on God in our lives, on the grace of God. Nothing that we've done deserves it, warrants it, earns it. It's a gift freely given. So that's the first thing to take away. But the second for me, well, actually the first is challenging as well. The second is what happens when that's not enough? What happens when we don't feel that God's grace in our lives is enough? When we feel that the thorn in the flesh, the mountain in front of us, the trial, the tribulation, whatever it is, whether it be a person, a physical ailment, something that we're worried about, the economy, COVID, our health, our finances, our loved ones, uh, our own health, whatever it is, what happens when we feel that God's grace is not enough? Isn't that a human uh, a response? Didn't Paul himself feel that? And, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure I don't match up to Paul's standards, uh, uh, up to the bar that he sets. He was able to, to come to that term and said, yes, God's grace is enough. But what happens when we struggle to meet that bar? And that, I think, is a more, again, a very human response. God, I really need you to take this away. I'm praying to you and I really can't do this until you've solved that problem for me. And I don't really know the answer. It's a challenge that I have to grapple with myself. But I think one aspect, one answer to that, when we are faced with that problem, is it's still God's grace, is still the answer, but in a different format. I think when we are struggling to overcome things personally, to have that mindset change that Paul had, that's where we, uh, God is still the answer, God's grace is still the answer, but in the body of Christ. 
in the people around us. And that's where we come in. When each of us might be struggling, the rest of us can be their strength. We are the body of Christ. Not I am the body of Christ, and when I'm struggling, the body of Christ is not active. Each and every one of us make up the body of Christ. And so what I would encourage us to consider is to keep our eyes open for those around us, our ears open for those around us. We are the hands and feet of God. When we are strong, maybe we can lend our strength to someone who needs it. That is still God's grace. It is not through us that we are blessing others. We are blessed to be a blessing to others through the grace and gift of God. So that's, that's, maybe that's a bit convoluted as well. But that's my takeaway from the readings today. Whatever afflictions we might have, pray to God that we will come to terms that God is enough. And in the power of God, we can continue to do God's work. God doesn't call the, um, the equipped. God equips the called. And every one of us here is called. And God will equip us in whatever God sends us to do. But the second aspect is to be aware of our brothers and sisters in need and how we can help them. When we are strong, we can lend that strength to others so that when we are weak, we can lean on the body of Christ as well. So I'll leave you with that, uh, that to ponder to consider how we as a church collective and as a church made up of individuals can continue to be the body of Christ in the, 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 the strength of God through the grace and gifts of God be a blessing to others. Amen.